Hello everyone, how's it all doing today? So today I haven't been making any videos in a long, long time. So I'll show you what I've been up to for the last couple of days. Well, I decided to try out the Nintendo Wii uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns. <laughs> I must say it's an okay game, but I was kind of a little disappointed with it. But uh, other than that, it's an incredibly frustrating and hard game. And I'm a hardcore gamer. <laughs> Okay, so today's video, I want to show you what a tea looks like in pre-molt and a post-molt one because I've been asked this so much time, so I thought I should re-upload a video on this. Okay, so uh, here's Hans, the mature male tea stermy. Uh, looks like and he may have laid another sperm web. So it might actually mate him probably next week. Anyways, okay, so... Tarantulas and pre-molts right now. I do have uh, two of them, actually. Uh, this one right here. And this beauty right here. Okay. So, this is what a tarantula looks like in pre -molt. So, let's look at this uh, Brachypelma arata, the uh, Mexican flame knee. Uh, she was last featured in the recent uh, feeding video. <laughs> so, uh, let me actually put it towards the light source so you can actually see what it looks like. So if you note the abdomen, it's kind of not hard to uh, miss it. You can actually see a blue-black bald spot on the abdomen. So that's a pure indication that's in pre-molt. So, tarantulas and pre-mold include the following signs. Since I have been asked this so much times, so I'll think I should repeat this. It's worth repeating anyway. So, you look for fading colors. Uh, that blue black spot on the abdomen, if it has a bald spot. You should notice that if a tarantula uh, suddenly stops eating, this doesn't really include the G. rosea because of their normal fasting behavior. It's most likely in pre molt Sometimes it'll uh, dig itself a little burrow or shut herself off in the cave. That's another sign that it's at almost in pre -molt. Also, uh, for some docile specimens, they sometimes appear to be slightly agitated. And that's how you tell. For old worlds, it's not really visible, uh, the bald spot, since uh, they cannot uh, flick or decaying hairs as most new world species are. but. The not eating behavior is probably your uh, best bet in that uh, it will mold and it will dig a burrow. Okay, so that's one of them. Now I'm another T that's in pre molt and I'm kind of really happy that this one is. Uh, Genesis, the Zenithus amanus, the Colombian uh, lesserback tarantula. Uh, so let's go have a look at her. Same principle. So you can tell Genesis right away is in pre molt See that blue-black bald spot on her abdomen? Definite sign in pre-mold, so... I can't wait to see what she'll become and how big she'll get. I'll be sure to document this if, uh, she, if I do catch her molting. Should be a couple of days right now. Pre-mold behavior d uh, tends to vary. Sometimes it'll take as little as a couple of days in pre molt sometimes it'll take a week, maybe two weeks, maybe even a month. So it really depends on how your tea is. Like I know my LP sling, uh, I think Daniela, when she was uh, about an inch and a half, she was in pre molt for eight days before she decided to molt. Okay. Now the care for a pre molt tea is rather simple. So whenever you see the big blue bald spot on her abdomen, this is an indication that you're not supposed to feed it uh, and just really all you simply do is just give it plenty of water and just keep the humidity level a little bit higher than normal. So why they don't eat is that they build, they save up their energy uh, to molt because it's a rather difficult process in a tarantula's life. So what they'll do is sometimes, or most of the cases, in fact all of them, uh, they will make a little web bed and they will turn upside down and lie on it and then push themselves out of their own body. I do have molting videos of how tarantulas molt. Uh, see like Gretel's molt or just search it up in one of my uh, videos. And you'll see it's a really nice process. 
Uh, generally, slings don't take very long to molt. Uh, sometimes they generally take uh, about maybe half an hour to about an hour and a half. Uh, juveniles take a little longer and adults even longer. In pre-molt behavior for adults, it's a lot longer than slings, of course, because they're much more older and they don't molt as frequently. Sometimes a sling will molt um, this year probably four times. Adults will probably molt maybe once or twice a year, depending on the species, of course. That's it. And bad molts do occur f uh, from time to time, albeit rare, but uh, sometimes uh, it's not always successful. Now, the freshly molted teas, I got two of them. They're freshly molted. Two for two. Not bad. Okay, this one here, uh, P. striata, my store ornamental. I pulled out the molt yesterday. So let's have a look at her. I don't know if you can see her way down there. Yeah, you could tell it's a lot brighter coloration than before. So I'm not sure if this is a female or a male. Um, could suspect that it's a female because my other one is a male. So like I said for Pocotheria species look for bright colors as their slings. Usually those are the signs of females. Males like my P. fasciata tend to brown out. So that's one way to tell if it's a male or a female. At least for pokies anyway. Now for another sling that molted and uh, kind of caught me off guard on that one too. Ah, uh, Here's another one that Freshly molted. This is my Lassiodora Klugi, the Bahia Scarlet Bird Eater. No wonder she has been recently uh, featured in one of my feeding videos. She wouldn't eat in front of the camera. And I came to uh, see her last night and she molted. Uh, the molted skin is um, somewhere. But <clears throat> really can't really sex it unless I get a better molt. Because this one was uh, kind of destroyed. Other than that, it's a really beautiful tea. I will have to prepare another cage setup for her. Uh, pretty much is going to go into a little small deli container like Genesis. So I'll be sure to uh, film the rehouse video on that. And uh, pretty much that's it. So you can see freshly molted. They're a lot brighter than what they appear to be. So at this stage, uh, you wait about a week after they molt. Because uh, tarantulas are very soft-bodied and very vulnerable at this stage. So if you give a cricket now, especially right after it molted, uh, you could cause a lot of fang damage from the spider and since the tarantula is very vulnerable and it's very soft, the cricket might actually chew on it. So it's very dangerous. Now for the best news of all. New teas coming in, so let's check out what I bought. Alrighty, so here are the new teas that are coming for this year. Well, I just love my desktop screen. This is my lovely piece of Fusca Lowland. I just love the colors on this specimen. Very big old girl. Okay, so going on to my Hotmail. This is what I ordered. Ephopa cyanathus. Yes, this is the last one that Tarantula Canada has. And I don't know if they will uh, keep... Uh, getting some because they're pretty hard to come by in Canada. So the reason mine uh, passed away is probably because of the lack of ventilation because uh, I talked to Amanda uh, and apparently this species is uh, very similar to the Calaria species and they kind of need uh, well ventilated and warm enclosures so um, that's what I'm going to do next time. I'll, I guess I'll use the same enclosure except I'll uh, poke a lot more air holes. I'm going to put some air holes on the cover and on the side so I have some cross ventilation going on so that way uh, there should be no reason why it should die. But um, anyways, at least I have now an, uh, another blue fang. Hopefully uh, this one will uh, serve me well. And another one, people wanted me to get more Australian species so I came across this one here. Salino Cosmia Crassy Peeps female. It's about a three inch female. So this is what the prices are. Uh, pretty cheap for a blue fang, $55. I remember seeing them about four years ago. About the same size, a half an inch, they were like $85. So this is a really great price. And for a three inch female, 
as Crassy Beeps, you know, it really can't go wrong here. So I decided to buy this because, this is my total, because of the taxes, PS, GST and PST. And as um, the New Year is going to be starting, it's going to suck now because uh, GST is supposed to go up 1% more this year from 7.5% to 8.5%. So we're in Quebec, we're most likely going to spend 15.5% on sales tax. That sucks. So anyways, I hope uh, this video helps you determine uh, whether or not a tea is in pre-molt or in post-molt and how to take care of them. So I hope you enjoy this video and thanks for watching.